getting along. You know, it's a fantastic quality of human beings is to be able to get along. And uh, the beauty of it is, centered at the very base of getting along in the Christian family, it has to do with zeal, okay? And the etymology of the word zeal is to bubble, uh, to well up, you know, when the Holy Spirit touches you and um, to be outgoing, but most of all, to love what you're doing. That's what zeal, true zeal. Now, at the same time in the Hebrew, we have um, kwa'al, it's spelled, it's pronounced K, but it's a kwa in the Hebrew tongue. And it, it can also mean jealousy, zealous, but zealous can also mean jealous. And our father's a jealous father in his love for his children. So I'm going to begin in Ezekiel chapter 36. That's just before that great 37th chapter where God said, You preach to them. They're spiritually dead or in a hammer, a bunch of dry bones, but I want you to bring them back to life with my word. That's to say, God's word, not man's word. But in this 36th chapter, our Father has something with the land. The first 15 verses of chapter 36 have to do with the land, following that, the people. We're going to cover the land because I think it's important. Our Father loves the land He created. He chose Jerusalem as His favorite spot in the world, way back in the 16th chapter of this same book, Ezekiel. And He begins talking of that land in this 36th chapter. We're going to cover a few verses here before we go to the New Testament. And verse chapter 36, that word of wisdom from our Father, verse 1 reads, Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. I want you to know that even nature itself needs to hear the word of God. Not the word of man. Not the traditions of men. But the very word of God itself. Uh, Verse 2, Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Ah, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. We, we've taken it over. A little lie here, a little lie there, a little misleading here, a little misleading there, and here we sit. We, we, we've got the Dome of the Rock. we got it all. Okay. All these high places... And, you know, that's, there's nothing new about that. Our word lets us know we have the time of the Gentile. But our Father is observing. He's watching. Third, th verse 3, Therefore prophesy. Because of this you prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. You know, where the large part of the ten tribes settled, uh, the United States of America and Canada, we're not the most popular nation in the world now. You know, when I first began my world travels, that was a big disappointment to me. When I found out other people weren't as proud of Americans as I was. I was shocked when I found out a lot of them hate us you know, for no reason. Well, they think they have a reason, and be that as it may, but God certainly blesses those that love Him. And don't ever kid yourself, because this is a Christian nation. Regardless of what someone might tell you, Christian no more, it still is. Even our Constitution brings forth those words of common which from Great Britain come from this King James Version, the very law itself of the land. And our Father, He has love for His children, but He is also zealous, or as we say in the Hebrew, kwa'al. He turns that jealousy, it gets hot. It can even, this word from ancient can even mean boil. Now, that's really getting zealous, okay? But our Father is certainly capable of it. 
when people just push that around long enough and do not listen to what? His word. His word is final. It is written as it is written, so it shall be. So uh, verse um, 4. Therefore, you mountains or nations of Israel, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, to the desolate waste, and to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey and derision to the residue of heathen that are round about. In other words, let's remove the name of God from school children. Okay. This, this is generally happening by what? Non-believers or even atheists. Don't think our father misses a beat on this. He doesn't. He's very, very aware. And here, we're not only talking about for his children's sake. This is the nation. This is the land that he created. He created whereby we're supposed to be getting along. Why? Because of listening to his word. His word gives us that direction, that knowledge, that wisdom on how to get along if people will partake there of. Um, let's go take it with verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, surely in the fire of mine jealousy, got it all, K all right here, okay? His emotion, his love, his understanding, his swelling up, his passion, that's what jealousy from zealously is called, okay? In the Hebrew tongue, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen against all Adumie, this is the children of Esau, Rush, Russia, which hath appointed my land unto their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey, to take it, to use it, to lie to it, to twist it, to twist God's word, to twist the truth. Our father's very jealous, zealous. Why? Because he loves us. He loves the nation. He loves what he's created. And don't ever forget, you know, many people think uh, they are under the delusion that God is going to destroy the world. He's only going to destroy the rudiments, that's to say the wickedness of the world. This is his home, and he has declared that. His eternal home. He's not going to let anything happen to it, okay? And verse 6, Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy, there again, his zeal, and in my fury, naturally that is turned to a boiling point, because ye have borne the shame of the, of the heathen. God doesn't like it when those that follow his son, which is to say Emmanuel, God with us, have to suffer. Okay. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like them to be made uh, shameful. That, you know, you mention the word Christian and people smirk. He, he doesn't like that. He's, he's going to take care of it. And we take care of it meanwhile. You're not a second-class citizen. You don't take anything off anybody, okay? You're a child of God. Act like it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. They've got it coming, and truth will prevail. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. He intends to make things right. He intends to take back the land. And you know something? When you read the 38th chapter of this great book of Ezekiel, which is the Battle of Hormagadon, it in the 39th, God fights it. We don't. Because there's a people that do not believe there is a God. He's going to document that there is one. They haven't seen anything yet, Adumia, as they come against his mountains. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled, and so on. The very land itself is going to be productive. It's going to um, take form. 
and it will survive. Now, so here we see that not only does man have zeal, and in a good sense, when the Holy Spirit touches you, again, I said, it means to glow. And you know, when you see the Holy Spirit touch someone in their service to God, they do glow. They glow with that truth, uh, that knowledge, that understanding. That's what getting along is about in the family of God. Little insignificant junk of your personal life, throw it out the door. It doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Serving God does. Because when you serve God, your life will fall in place as it should. Open your Bibles, if you would, now in the New Testament. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, great book of Romans. Teachings of Paul. Chapter 10. Now, again, this Greek word, Z-E-O, Zoe, or pronounced Zoe, Zoe, it means to bubble over with rejoicing, happiness. Beloved, when you have that, there's not room for troubles or not getting along. That becomes so earthly and so foreign to you that you want nothing to do with it because you're a child and a servant of the living God. Chapter 10, verse 1, the great book of Romans, and it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. All you got to do is believe on Him. He'll tell us. For I bear them record that they have a zeal, that's to bubble up, to glow, a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Not only that zeal, it, it gives them a zeal for knowledge. They search the Scripture, they hunt through the Scripture, and that zeal for God and for God's Word becomes paramount in their life. And if you're chosen as a teacher, you cannot help yourself, you're going to teach. Whatever your gift may be, there's nothing will prevent you for that glow comes into you of zeal, zeah, and it shines and is paramount. And again, it makes the troubles of this world so nonsensical that it's laughable. Absolutely laughable. Well, you don't understand, they offended me. So what? Are you a child of God? Stand up and act like it. Well, they're picking. Grow up. You know, our Father's in control and He's looking for mature beings, mature children that are not easily offended because they know what's in this world and what it brings upon us. And hey, when it's too rough for everybody else to plow, that's just the way we like it. Okay, bring it on. We can cut it. We can handle it. Okay, Deal with your, the, rough, the toughest problem you've got, I mean take care of it first thing in the morning. Get it, and you know, everything else will just fall in place. That zeal for praying to the Father to guide you and direct you, that glow that comes from that Holy Spirit draws attention even to, people can tell that. They sense it. They know it. And there's a child of God just went by there. Okay? That's getting along. That's getting right along, okay, that zeal for knowledge, because it is that knowledge that makes you successful. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness 
have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You want to listen to that real close. Well, I'd like to make a name for myself. Oh, you would. It's self-righteousness then. And I guarantee you, you're going to be a failure. Anytime, well, I just want to get even. No, you don't. There's ways of getting even intelligently with the zeal of God, that glow that, wound, that heals wounds, that makes you stand out, that the Holy Spirit touches you and wells up. I like that etymology of the word where you well up. I know many have felt that. You know, sometimes even when you well up, that moisture comes in your eye and you feel the touch of your Father. You start looking for it some other way and you're in trouble, all right? Self-righteousness won't cut it. Verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. In other words, He, when we break a law or trespass a law, He forgives us. He fulfilled the law. He didn't change it. Don't misread that. He didn't change the law. The law of gravity is still very much in effect. If I jumped off of this platform, guess where I would go? Straight down. Okay, pretty near it. Okay, it's still there. Okay, but what it does in your own life when you've been wounded by someone, he can heal it. Okay, what does it amount to? You know, some silly person insulted you. Disregard it, okay? Pray that God will take care of the situation. You know something? He's jealous. He always will. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. You know, to be perfect, you had to follow every law. You could not break one of them, or you broke them all, okay? But... Praise be to God, verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith, I repeat, is of faith, speaketh on this wise. This is what it says. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. But say if you love him, you definitely are going to heaven. You know, you don't try to figure your own salvation out when God has made it very uh, easy for you to partake of that salvation to get along. You start messing with the machinery and try to figure out your own. That's what happened when they built the Tower of Babel. Okay. We're going to fix our own way to get up above the next flood to save us. God had a way for them to get above it, to behave. Okay. Uh, who shall ascend into heaven? What is, that is, to bring Christ down from above. One more verse. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. In other words, he, he accomplished that once. You start messing around trying to self-analyze and prepare your own salvation rather than accepting what he has given to you, it's kind of like re-crucifying him all over again. That won't work. That is not necessary. All you have to do is repent. Let him know you love him. Verse 8, but what saith it? What does it mean? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, and is the word of faith which we preach. In other words, that's the word that will save you. What does it do? It means you're a believer. And if you're a believer, you're not going to perish. What does that mean? You're not going to hell. You're heaven bound, but not on your own account, but because of him that paid the price. He died for us to pay for those sins that when we repent, they're erased and you can well up and glow because you're a servant of the living God. And he has made that possible for you in his own way. Verse 9, And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, I'm a Christian, in other words, 
and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. Our Father truly loves his children. That's why Father came. You know, he didn't send you down here in a flesh body where it can be kind of rough sledding sometimes. You betcha. But he did it himself. And he came himself to show us how to do it. Hebrews chapter 9 gives you a, a blow by blow account of what he did for us, uh, all because he could destroy the devil, which is to say Satan. Okay. Get him off your back. Okay. And he does that. But to say it in your mind, you don't even have to say it out loud. He still hears you. He's a mind knower. And he can hear your very thoughts of your love proceeding out to him. That glow, that bubbles when he touches you. And he says, you're my child. I love you. And he takes you to him. Then how important are the things of this world? Well, they offended me so what? Compared to the beauty that you possess in your heart, in your mind, do you want to play kids' games? Are you a little kid? Or do you mature as a Christian serving God? Okay? You think I'm getting a little rough? I'm not. It's the truth. Sometimes the truth kind of scalds a little bit, you know, binds, but it's true. We're in the world handle it. Take care. Don't let it bite you. Don't get all carried away. You're a child of God. Act like it. Let your heart bubble up, well up, and glow in the presence of Almighty God because you believe and salvation belongs to you. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He's saved. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Does that fit you? You won't be ashamed. Why? You know, if you're mature, if you're an adult, half of the little old trivial stuff that happens, you're not going to worry about it anyway. You're going to say, but by the grace of God, there go I, okay? And you act the adult and glow, okay? That makes, then God sees that. God doesn't let the enemy get away or offenders get away with what they think they're going to. He has a way of thumping gourds, okay? And he'll thump them real good. So now let's go back to, where do I want to go to? I want to go to... I want to go to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> getting along. It's, it's, it's important. It's important that you get along because it's your life in the flesh. It's your life here on earth, and it can be miserable if you want it to be. Or it can be wonderful if you want it to be. And you say, well, what about all the trouble? Still wonderful. Hey, you can cut it. Well, God will never put more on you than you can handle. And if you get a bunch of it, that means he knows that's my babe. They can handle it. He, can take, he or she can take care of business, my business, God's business, and let them glow. So uh, maturity is an awesome thing. It's a secret of zealousness, and um, as as we say here, z oh, zia, zia to bubble, to glow, to well up. Chapter twelve, verse one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're supposed to do that. Father, here I am, use me. Now, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people automatically, Christians, say, he's talking about sin. Not necessarily. 
You know, uh, have you ever known how doctors just treat the disease and kind of don't take care of prevention? He's talking about prevention. Okay. In other words, you teach the whole truth, the whole Word of God, and that gives people that glow that keeps them out of problems, okay? Verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your, your what? Your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Did it say your will? Did it say self-will? No, I think it said the will of God. Well, how do I know the will of God? Read his letter. He'll tell you. He's not bashful. He's very intelligent. And he will speak his will to you. And if you follow it, you'll find that glow. And you separate yourself from this world. And these just little trivia stuff that some people get so bogged down in. I watched I watch television where they pulled a, a horse from a miry Texas w over wet soil. The more it moved, the more it went down. That's the way people are. They get caught up in the ways of this world and one little thing takes them down a little ways and that compounds another fracture and pretty soon all, they're so busy trying to waller out of the world that they forget about God. They forget about what they're really here for. And the glow dims. Sometimes it just goes out. And they're dead spiritually. Not good to be around. Nobody really wants to be around them. When that glow and that bubble is no longer there. Why? Because Christ left. That's not good, friend. Separate yourself from the world. Get, uh, getting along is a beautiful thing. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, that means maturely, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God gives us different gifts, gives us different amounts. How, you know, and, and the more you study and gain ground with His help. But don't, don't ever do it just for self. You know, I do a lot of research, and I'm, I don't like to use myself as an example, but I will. And sometimes when I'm off, I study for myself. Okay? Because I don't have to worry about how am I going to explain that. But you know something, when God really blesses you, it's when you're studying to relay the message to somebody else, not for yourself, but to share that word with someone else. When your life is dedicated to helping someone else and you're separated from the world, that's when God blesses you and that's when you begin to glow in serving Him, the perfect Word of God, the perfect will of God. I'm not saying any of us will ever be perfect, but boy, we can knock at the door because you know the truth, and that truth will set you free. So God gives gifts as you deserve them. And hey, don't you ever underestimate yourself. The great day is coming when the spurious Messiah is going to be here, and God's really going to call for some champions. Okay, So don't you, you be set. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office as the function. Not we, we're, you know, um, the foot doesn't do the mouth's job. Your ear doesn't do what the nose is supposed to do. You know, there's different functions in the many-membered body of Christ. So we being many, verse 5, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. It's a many-membered body of Christ. We get it done. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to brag on this group 
But man, this little old group from Northwest Arkansas has reached around, opens its arms and reached around the world and touched the world with that glow, that bubble. And it continues to grow because of the many membered body that have the faith to not think little, but to think big. And big is our Father. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, uh, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. That's to say truth in itself, pistos in the Greek, whatever is given to you, then let it be. That's to say, prophesy means to t is, is part of teaching, okay? You teach the prophets. Our ministry, verse 7, let us wait on our ministry, ministering rather, or he that teacheth on teaching. Waiting on it means to wait for it. Wait for the knowledge and the wisdom as you study so that you're ready to teach, so that you're ready to go out and share in evangelism. That's to say prophesying, teaching the dry bones. Boy, they're dry. They need help. Verse 8, or he that exhorteth, that means the mouth, the speaker, uh, on exhortation. And he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with carefulness. That's to say, show mercy to those and share their sorrow and, the, and with their sickness. Help them, lift them up. Give them the word of God. You know, you talk about a glow and a perfect to bubble, to be vivacious, to be zealous in the Lord, that Holy Spirit giving unction. That really helps a sick person, especially when you lay hands on. And not you, but Jesus touches them and raises them up. It's a precious thing to have in your possession is the love of God the belief of God, the faith of God, and your gifts, the gifts that God gives you to exercise your place in that many-membered body. Don't ever copy another person's gift. You've got your own. Search for it. Find it. Wait for it. It'll come because you're a child of God. Um... Let, um, let love be without dissimulation. Uh, abhor, uh, let it be real, in other words. Don't, don't feign love. You, you really can't. Love is love, and you can't help it. If you love somebody, it just happens. Okay? But you can love the family because they're not of the world. They're serving God. Abhor that which is evil. Find it to be an abomination. Cleave to that which is good. Search it out. That's what you're about. That's what makes you glow. And that's what makes you bubble. That's what wells you up in the zealousness of serving Him. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. In other words, preferring to lead the way or help someone else more than yourself. Okay. That's, that's what it's all about, you know. Dedicate, separate yourself from the world and dedicate your life to helping others. That's a good thing. That's serving God. That's to, to acquire that glow. Now, you know, it, well, is he trying to make preachers out of all? No, in your daily life, getting along. That's where it really happens at, is in your daily life, the people you come in contact with, don't think they don't notice. They can feel that presence of the Holy Spirit sooner or later, even some of the toughest. They know where to go to ask questions. They'll search, search you out. Now, don't just be interested in helping others more than self. Okay, and you'll do just fine. 
you'll be serving the living God. Verse 11, this is why we came to this chapter. Not slothful, that means lazy in business. Why? Well, anybody that's lazy in business is not worth a hoot, okay? They're worthless. They're not going anywhere. They're not going to amount to anything. They're never going to mature. You can't depend on them. So you'd be wasting your time to. So you pass on over that one. You've all heard me say what Proverbs says about a lazy person, slothful. God, do you know what God likens them to? A hinge, like a door hinge, only they're hinged to a mattress. They just flop from one side to the other in bed. Okay. Never amount to a hill of beans. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to tell you what that type of person will do. They'll reach out and say, help me. Help me, help me. They're by, you can't help somebody like that. Not until you let them go to the devil and the devil roughs them up a little bit and then you can help them. Okay? That, that's scriptural, believe it or not. It is. Paul, that's the teachings of Paul. When a, an old boy was sleeping with his father's wife, you let him go to the devil and rough him up and maybe we can save him then. Okay? So, but... Um, then the rest of that, listen carefully. Fervent in spirit. That word fervent is zeal. That's to bubble up. That's to glow. Glow in the spirit. Let the spirit of God touch your very heart uh, and raise you up and separate you from the trivia of this world. And be somebody, be a child of God. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That's what's important. You know, you can't help serving Him when you find out what He's done for you. And that's getting along. You do these things and I guarantee you, you'll be getting along with those that you're supposed to, okay? You still live in a troubled world. There's some people it's impossible. We'll, we'll get to that here in a moment. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. When you need help, call for it. God hears. But you can't help but rejoice in the hope that we've got ahead of us. Do you understand what waits us? I mean, an eternity of no pain, no sickness, no illness, and the love of your heavenly Father, Almighty God. And this earth to be put back as it was before the pollution hit it. The firmament going back into place. No storms, no death. That's what we got waiting for us. That's really something to look forward to. That's really something to separate yourself from the trivia of this world and serve Him. That's what it's talking about. That verse is why we came to this chapter. Fervent is that same word, via, to glow in his service. So, 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. In other words, if they curse you, give them the word of God. Well, what does that mean exactly? If they curse me, what am I supposed to give them the Word of God? Well, what does the Word of God say a person's going to do when they curse? Tell them they're going to hell. Okay. That's giving them the Word of God, okay? And straighten them out. Give them something to think about, okay? It always helps out to practice a little tough love occasionally. You are supposed to love your children and those that love their children don't spare the rod. That doesn't mean you beat them to death, but you have discipline. Well, it's the same way with your enemy. If you love him, you're going to use discipline. You're going to straighten them out, okay, whatever it takes. Uh, Fifteen, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. In other words, share their sorrow. It's a Christian family, and you're one and one. 16, be of the same mind one toward another. That's, let's have harmony, if it's possible. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Now look, it, it isn't important how much you know. Okay. 
I'll repeat, I'll rephrase that. It isn't important for you to take a, a tender-eared person just being brought into the Word and snow them under with how much knowledge you have of God's Word. Okay. You're going to drown them. You don't do that. You condescend. You, you, go, you, know, you go to that level. You know, when a lot of times, let, I'll use it, when in a foreign nation where the people were very short and I was quite tall, especially in their eyes, if I wanted to talk to a little child, I had to get down on my knees and smile a lot, okay? Or I, I was a spooky looking sight. I'm kind of spooky anyway, I guess, but I, I want to use that as an analogy, though, of teaching. Got it? Okay? Don't, it isn't important what you know, it's important what you can teach them that need it, that need the help, okay? Uh, 17, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. You provide that Word of God or what the Word of God has to say about anything that might be offensive. Uh, 18, listen carefully. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You see, it's impossible to get along with some men. You just can't do it, okay? Waste of time. Write them off and go on, okay? Because it is impossible. And, and I always like to bring in, don't cast your pearls before swine. Once you plant a seed, if it grows, fantastic. If it doesn't, only God, listen to me, you cannot make a seed grow in the mind of a person. Only God can. And if God refuses to allow that seed to grow, that should be sufficient for you. Because who are you compared to God? Well, I don't even have to go there, do I? So don't cast your pearls before swine. Get in along if possible. Okay. Um, in, in other words, you, I, I'll use an analogy. If... Um, if, if you had someone that were teaching your children bad, in, was a bad influence on your children and so forth, as let's say a neighbor, um, you're not going to tolerate it because it's not possible to get along with them and let them ruin your children, okay? So a line must be drawn. And verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Do you believe that? I do, with all my heart. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't defend yourself if some bully comes up to you on the street or somewhere, or in your, tries to come into your home. But if it is in the body, don't worry, God will take care of it. it it'll take a little time. But God will handle it. He's not going to bless somebody that is offensive to the many-membered body, period. He won't tolerate it. Verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Feed him what? The Word of God, if he, if he requires. If he thirst, give him drink. The living water. The water that is eternal. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Now listen carefully. Be not overcome of evil. That's to say the evil spirit. Hey, it's around. But overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. That's the way you do it. That's the way you get along. When that Holy Spirit glows in your very heart, your face, it shines. And you well up when God touches you or leads you, directs you. And you feel that presence. Don't think someone else can. They do. And that's how you overcome evil with that that is good. God is good. Only God is good, really, ultimately. So you come, overcome evil spirits by the Holy Spirit. 
that gives you the zeal to know and to understand the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the many-membered body, that which is the temple of God in the end times, Father. That temple is strong, Father, and we thank you for it. Father, we ask that you bless. Let each of these be uh, blessed in your very word. We ask it in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen, amen. Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. Um, in, in the Good Speed Apocrypha, in either first or second Ezra, which is Ezra, uh, that's the Greek pronunciation for Ezra. Um, I'm sorry, I'm the I can't remember for sure if it's the first or second Ezra speaks of this very thing that all will be born, and it says at the end they're a little bit weaker. Okay. And I believe it is stated that they're a little weaker at the end because I believe God in all his fairness causes the third that followed Satan in the first earth age to be on earth right now. That's why I think we have as much trouble as we do with young people and other people. It's just different than it used to be because that third is here to face the Antichrist that deceived them before to show them it can happen again, okay? My opinion, don't ask me to document that, but I, that'll work, okay? Um, Will from Oklahoma, I'm 17 years old. Uh, my family, um, wait, question, we, my, Pastor Murray is the first pastor my grandma has listened to for 40 years because he didn't, she didn't agree with the rest of them's teaching. Well, well, great. You tell, you give her a big hug for me, okay? Question: We were wondering, with all the battles of sla and slaughter, how can the land in and around Israel be anything but bones? Did they have mass burials or cremations or what? Thank you. We love your teaching. God sent you to us. Thanks. Well, and God sent you to us. Well, set for seventeen. You're doing real good. Um, just remember, it isn't the bones or the remains that count, it's what's in heaven, it's the spiritual body, because all bodies are going to be changed, and, and um, there are a lot of bones when you read Ezekiel 37 that are still alive, but still spiritually, they're deader than a hammer. They, they have no conception of what's going on in this world. So that's why God said, prophesy to them. That means preach to them. And boy, what do you see out there now, Ezekiel? He's, well, I see bone coming. I see a little life begin. Well, preach to them some more. Give them some more truth. And boy, the bones began. Pretty soon, you know, it was all came and it was a good thing. So uh, always think spiritual, not so much on the bones, okay? You're doing great. Proud of you. Tawana from Georgia. When Jesus comes back and he comes to get his children, will we go to heaven before judgment or will we go through the tribulations and then go to heaven? We're going to go through the tribulation. That's what God has his elect for. The Holy Spirit wants to speak through us against the Antichrist. I wouldn't miss that for anything. And um, we, we have to do that so the rest of uh, God's children can hear that truth. God said even the gain, in Luke 21, God says even the gainsayers will be convinced by what you say 
when you're delivered up before the spurious Messiah. What a time to live. So uh, we're going through, but hey, uh, the judgment that really counts, the, the uh, tribulation rather, is God's tribulation. But you know something? He's not angry at you. He's not going to bother us one iota. It's just the enemy. Uh, Madat from California. Uh, there are two things I would not be surprised if it turned up. First, that Christ had visited the Americas with his uncle. You might find something to that effect on priest writings found on stone. Um, the question I have for you, have you ever seen anything that might indicate Christ visited America? Do you? Well, you know, we, we know many Christians did. The, there is, uh, in Central America, there was a tall person visited, and they have a symbol, they call him Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl. And they, m many scholars believe this was Christ that visited that area. And do you know what? They still look for him to return again. Um, and many of the monuments and many of the um, pyramids that you see down in uh, Ciudad de Mexico or near Ciudad de Mexico and um, in Belize, uh, you uh, see these signs of Quetzalcoatl. And um, certainly um, Christ doesn't play favorites. And so there it is. It, the sun kings, which is the Uchis, and I'm saying, I'm talking in things now that very few people would know very little about. Uchis was the king line that came with the uh, American Indian tribes, which came from Europe. They migrated across some way. Because their rituals, um, and I'm not going to say, I'm not at liberty to talk too much about this, but um, very biblical, okay. When someone in the Cherokee Nation worships Yahweh, did you hear what I said, Yahweh, and the Holy Spirit, you want to be really careful how you think, okay, yeah, yeah. Much is to be learned. Uh, Dora from Kansas. Hi, my husband and I have only been watching your program a few weeks. We are in a church that doesn't preach the gospel as you have opened our eyes to understand it better. We are considering leaving the church, but we don't know how to find a church that preaches the truth, the whole truth. Do you have any suggestions? We're praying about this. Uh, there's one thing I never do. God's in control, okay? He may have you there for a purpose. I don't know, okay? There may be one soul in that church you're supposed to touch, and it may be that he wants you out of there, okay? But uh, I, I, this is one piece of advice I never give. You know, this church never, I mean, you know, somebody could be coming here 10 years, and if they don't show up, uh, we don't say, where were you Sunday? Because we know God had them somewhere. We believe what we preach. So we don't butt into God's business of where he moves people and what he does with them. We believe if you are God's elect, God's going to move you himself. And um, so we don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. But, but I will tell you this, when you listen to television, it is an extension of church, our church, okay? Shepherd's Chapel is a church and um, a Bible teaching church. So you're kind of in church when you are studying. Tracy from uh, Georgia. That may be California. Well, Tracy, you know, don't you? Um, I do have one question. My dad says he believes in God, but he does not believe in Jesus. Uh, he says he believes there was a man named Jesus, but he was not born of a virgin. He, was, he has studied the Bible in the Hebrew and the Greek and understands the Bible more than I. Is there anything I can say to him that might change his mind or heart? Well, um, how, how can he say when God would say, such as the lady that asked about 127 in Genesis, God made man in his own image? And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was God with us. 
You know, if, it, if your father, in a sense, uh, he should not refuse the Savior because it was God in flesh. You want to make note, Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I want you to study that chapter and it tells why Christ came here in the flesh body. That he asked us to and he said, I'm no better than you. I'll do it myself to show you how to get it done. That was God. Okay. So he needs to think about it in that line. Hebrews chapter 2 and also bear down on the fact that Jesus was simply God in the flesh. Okay. Emmanuel, God with us. All right. Uh, Visitors Victor from Mississippi. Dear Pastor Murray, I listen every... Okay, let's see. I've got to get to you. I understand Mark 13, 11. My question is about 13, 12. Is it the elect that shall be betrayed to death because of their family, delivered up to death, which is Satan? Not death, dead, or in a hammer, killed. But Satan's name is death. Okay? We're delivered up before him to witness against him. Documentation is that same chapter I mentioned of that person before. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2 where it stipulates Christ came to this earth to destroy death which is the devil. Okay. I'm out of time. Hey, you know what? I love y'all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. Makes His day when you read the letter He's sent to you. Okay, let him know you love him in return. Won't you do that? Uh, that's so. When he ma when you make his day, he's going to make yours. Brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Won't you do that? Bless God, he will always bless you. Most important though, this: you stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.